Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship. Glad that all of you are here. We also welcome those people who are worshiping with us online. The service is being recorded and will be posted to the church website and Facebook page um, as soon as possible this morning. A few things to make you aware of, most importantly, is that next week our worship schedule will be different. You have these blue flyers that you can pick up um, from Carrie on your way out if you would like one, um, or more to hand out to friends to remind everybody. Uh, This is next week already. At 8 a.m., we will be having worship in the sanctuary, and we will wear masks and continue to distance with numbers still going up and community transmission high. We still have to do our best to take care of each other. So 8 a.m., worship in the sanctuary with masks and distancing. 9.15 to 9.45 will be Sunday school. So kids ages three through fifth grade are invited to join us for Sunday school. Of course, it's going to be different than it has been in the past, but we're excited to gather together in person. And what we will be doing is being outside as much as we possibly can. If we have to come inside with the kids, then we will um, need our masks on. But when we're outside, masks are optional. big thing there too is that a grown-up must stay with each household of children. So we won't be having a sign-in, sign-out procedure. So for safety and lots of other reasons, we're just making sure that there's a grown-up with each group of household of kids so we can keep track of everybody and be safe as we can. Then at 10 o'clock, we will have worship in the parking lot. And outside right now, we are not requiring masks, but we keep our distance the best we can. And we will hope, we hope to do outside worship as long as we can until the weather doesn't want to do it anymore. So as long as the weather crop waits, we'll be outside for parking lot worship at 10 o'clock. And then if it's raining or yucky, we will move inside to the sanctuary for worship at 10 o'clock if that happens. So plan on being outside and when you come and there's no cones or anything set up, and you'll be able to tell if we're inside or outside at 10 a.m. Again, in, when we're inside, masks are required. So that takes place on Sunday. We will continue to record the first service and post it online on Sunday mornings as soon as we can. So online will continue to be an option for everyone as well. Does that make sense? Any questions? If you have any questions, feel free to call or email during the week. Also, all this information is in the weekly email too, so you can find it all there. I'll stop there with announcements. That's kind of a big deal. Things keep changing and we keep adapting, so thank you for your flexibility and understanding as we continue to do that. We begin our worship service um, with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Creator and of the Redeemer and the Sustainer. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, throughout the ages, you transform sickness into health and death into life. Open us to the power of your presence and make us a people ready to proclaim your promises to the whole world through Jesus Christ, our healer and Lord. Amen.
Our reading this morning is a reading from James, chapter 2, verses 1 through 17. My brothers and sisters, do you, with your acts of favoritism, really believe in our glorious Lord, Jesus Christ? For if a person with gold rings and fine clothes comes into your assembly, and if a poor person in dirty clothes also comes in, and if you take notice of the one wearing the fine clothes and say, have a seat here, please, while the one who is poor you say, stand there, or sit at my feet, have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters, has not God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to be heirs of the kingdom that he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor. It is not the rich who oppress you. Is it not they who drag you into court? Is it not they who blasphemy the excellent name that was invoked over you? You do well if you really fulfill the loyal, the royal law according to the scripture. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. For the one who said, you shall not commit adultery, also said, you shall not murder. Now if you do not commit adultery, but if you murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak and so act as those who are to be judged by the law of liberty. For judgment will be without mercy to anyone who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm, and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. Word of God, word of life. And it needs to be our I invite you to stand for the reading of the gospel. This is the Holy Gospel according to Mark, the seventh chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there, yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him, and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then Jesus said to her, For saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed and the demon gone. Then he returned from the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon toward the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to lay his hands on him. He took him aside in a private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers into his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then looking up to heaven, he, he sighed and said to him, Epitha, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened and his tongue was released, and he smoke, spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one, but the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. So in this gospel story that we hear today, 
Jesus was outside of the territory of the towns and the villages that he normally visited. So he wasn't where he normally would be, but word had spread about what he was doing, so of course people wanted to see him and figure it all out. He's approached by a woman, and she's often referred to as the Syrophoenician woman. And this woman, she wants Jesus to heal her daughter. She kneels before Jesus, literally begs him to heal her little girl who we're told has an unclean spirit. Jesus's reaction is kind of harsh. He says to her, let the children be fed first, for it is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. Now the children that Jesus is talking about in this statement are the children of Israel and the dogs are understood to be all the other people. And this woman, she was a Gentile, a foreigner, and at the time, she was not considered to be one of the chosen people. And as a woman who is not accompanied by a husband or a male relative who initiates a conversation with a strange man, that would make her even more of an outsider. And Jesus' response to her is harsh, as I said. He calls her a dog, basically. And you wonder how Jesus could say such a thing. And there's lots of ways you can look at it. When you do the research, it appears that Jesus could be quoting a bit of Jewish folk wisdom, but that doesn't really lessen the sting of his words. Some say that Jesus is testing the woman to get her affirmation of faith. Others think that here we just see a very human side of Jesus who's exhausted and just needs a break. Whatever his reason is for saying these words, words, the the woman, she calls him out on it. She calls out his harsh criticism when she says, yet even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. In other words, she's saying that her daughter, her and her daughter, have just as much right to the bread as anyone else. So when this tenacious and persistent mother, when she comes back at Jesus with her clever response, Jesus can only agree. Jesus can only agree that God's love and healing power know no boundaries. They don't know any ethnic or political or social boundaries. And we're told that the woman, she went home, she found her daughter in bed, and the demon gone. And then we hear another story today. This story is about a man that Jesus and the disciples encounter on their way home. an outcast at the time because he couldn't hear and he had a speech impediment. So he was brought to Jesus and people begged him to heal him. And we're told that Jesus took the man aside, put his fingers into his ears, spat and touched his tongue. And then Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Epitha, which means be opened. Epitha, be opened. And immediately we're told the man's ears were opened His tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Epitha, be opened. Those are powerful words. We can look back to that first story with the woman with the sick daughter, and these words apply to her story as well. Epitha, be opened. There are words there that apply to Jesus himself. Jesus was open open to hearing her, and eventually he saw her pain. He became open, looked past the fact that she was a Syrophoenician woman, that she was an outsider, someone who he wasn't supposed to help, and he healed her daughter. And I think that's a word we can carry with us, epitha, epitha, as a reminder for us to be open, to be open to the people around us like Jesus was, to be open to being in relationship with all people. Epitha, be open. Be open to what God is doing in our lives. Be open to see how God is working. Be open to listening to each other. We can think about it like, do our words and our actions show others that we are open to see God at work in our world? Are our ears open to hear the needs of others? I think we all need to be reminded to be open, just like Jesus was. To open our hearts to God and to what God is doing. To be open 
to the needs of those around us and open our ears to listen to our neighbors. Epitha, be open. Jesus said those words 2,000 years ago, and he says those words to us today. Epitha, be open. May we be open to see God at work in our world. May we be open to each other. May our ears be open to listen so that we may see each other as God sees us, as loved and forgiven children of God. And when we feel like we can't be open, may we hear the word epitha, be open, and remember Jesus' arms are open to embrace all as loved children of God. Amen. With the whole church, we confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. God of grace and God of glory, for the church we pray. Uphold our leaders and sustain all volunteers and inspire our worship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of peace, for the nations we pray. Protect the world from tyranny and violence. Guide our elected officials. Look with mercy on the people of Afghanistan and bring peace to all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hope of the world, in this time of pervasive adversity, we pray. Preserve us from storms and wildfires, protect us from harm, and help us to care for each other. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Rock of ages, for laborers, we pray. Grant a just wage to the employed and meaningful jobs to the unemployed and shape our society to honor all residents. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God of love, for those who are poor, we pray. Feed those who hungry, house those without homes, assist the powerless, and form us into habits of generosity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healer of our every ill, for those who are suffering, we pray. Heal those who have contracted COVID-19, embrace those with mental illness, and open up opportunities for all who lack resources. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Graceful God, strong to save, for the grace shown to our ancestors in the faith, we praise you. For life at the end of time in your presence, with all the saints, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. For those of you that are worshiping online, I invite you to pause the video if you need to get bread or crackers or wine or grape juice. For those of you in the sanctuary, I invite you to get your baggies out. I'll instruct you on when the right time is to open those up. The Lord is with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat, 
This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and forever. Amen. I invite you to peel off that top layer that goes to the wafer. You may eat that wafer. This is the body of Christ given for you. If you are with somebody who does not commune and they would like a blessing, you can make the sign of the cross on their forehead or on their hand and say the words, you are a loved child of God. I invite you to peel off that next layer that goes to the grape juice. You may drink that. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you always in God's grace. Amen. On your way out of worship, there is a bowl for you to put your communion baggies in. There's also an offering plate for you to put offering in if you would like to. And I invite Lori to lead us in our sending. Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.